I think that Michael Scott, I think that that Steve Carell blows Ricky Gervais out of the water. I'll just say don't, it like that. Don't I'll talk just shit have about to Ricky Gervais right on the podcast. Right yeah, dude, but that's the goat. That's the goat. <laughs> right, Are you kidding right. me? Hey, chill, Let's talk chill. about candy. Got- Welcome to Joy Tactics, the podcast dedicated to all things joyful, joyous, and meeting as many celebrities as humanly possible. Hosted by Eric Rahill, Nate Veroni, and Jack Bensinger. Enjoy. Well, well, well. Bloop, 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 bloop. You remember rap battles of history where they would do like a president versus broccoli? Oh my god, yeah. Oh shit. Well, TV versus movies. Is what oh wait, I was tr- I was trying to do a siren for an emergency episode. Oh yeah. All right, go ahead. We just discussed when you were you we were getting water, we were like, maybe we shouldn't uh, you know, mention that it's like <laughs> that we are recording this, you know, previously and, and this is like um, an episode that we'll put out if we mess up one week or something like that. We could be slick about it and that people will never have to know, you know, it'll just go into the rotation. So but I'm you just fucked it up it. within two seconds of recording. It's at the point where I'm getting sick of myself, even more sick of myself than you guys. <laughs> where I, you don't know what it's like to be in a body that you want to destroy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess I could see that. I mean, be here anymore. Well, let's let's just say that that all was a joke. Is did we record yes. this a while back or did we not? Who knows? Based yep. on our facial hair, you might think, and our head hair, you might think, is this old? And based on the fact that I'm not in the in the streaming out of my car that I'll be living in after I do what I do over the holidays. Oh, Jack's back in the apartment. Who let him back in? Nope. Right. Yeah. We Something tells me that there's going to be a big signifier that this is recorded months ago. Mm-hmm. Like, like you said, Jack's going to be living in a car or I have, bo- Eric, I have both my arms. Up. Nate's off. The <laughs> <You're>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, well, let's uh, listen. We are both, I mean, all three, <laughs> what the hell? All three of us are extremely well-versed, uh, not just in podcasting, not just in martial arts, not just in fashion, and not just in motivation and whatever. More so, to the point, TV and movies. These mm-hmm. are things that we literally, the three of us, grew up watching. Yeah. So our history goes, how, how long does it take to get a degree in college? Four years? <laughs> if you're like me, four years. If you're like me, seven. I thought you were going to say seven. six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, four simple years is all it took for me to get a degree in journalism and theater, minor in theater. I just got a pretty funny text message. What is it? Say it now and doc. This is from person. Brace Belden of True Enough. Oh, I don't what fuck he with say? because he's a fucking weirdo. Um, but he just texted me. <laughs> Do you know any producers? Any producers? <laughs> <laughs> that could mean so many. I just think Let it's so, me it's just, so vague. Yeah, I know like, some producers. You know what? This is a great segue. This is a great fucking segue because we are, you know, we're we're one of the few people that are, yes, we are podcasters, of course. We, we love it. We love doing this. But we are one of the few podcasters that also have their toes dipped into the Hollywood system Halloween. in a way that is that we are basically entrenched in it. Mm-hmm. Our, our whole foot is in the is in the pool. We put okay? our whole foot in the industry. And a lot. See, Brace is somebody who is he's just a. I don't want to say he's just a podcaster, but like, he's, right. that's his whole world. You know what I'm saying? Right, and it's simple. It's literally just words on a fucking recorded audio track yeah. and put onto line online. Yeah. Whereas movies and TV, you're matching the visual with the audio at the same time. Thank you. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. So I'll, immediately you're in, a, you're in a different ballpark. <laughs> right, because of the visual due to that element. It's, yeah. it's, but more so due to the intertwining of the two elements. Visual storytelling, which is essentially storytelling is... Well, why do they call it that? I guess it should be... Well, it should be visual visual and auditory telling. Yeah. yeah. And um, let me ask you this. When did the radio come out? 
probably the 1910s. Everything, I feel like every invention comes out like the 30 years before you think it did. Like I think the radio yeah. was popping in like the 1830s with Napoleon and like the, people just thought like, oh, this, what is this fucking dumbass like little metal box? Like we're not, we'll never use that, you know? Right. It's, and it just kind of was all like muffled, like you couldn't even hear anything. Can I blow your guys' minds? Uh, you can, try. can I blow your minds? You can try. The radio came out in 1895. That's when they did the fucking drop. Limited release. Uh, supreme style drop of the radio. Goog- the inventor was named Googly... Googly Limo? Macar- Macaroni. Macaroni. Marconi. Italian. Interesting. Yeah. How What's could you name? tell? <laughs> first, in that now first movie... 1903. Oh, 19 fucking 11. First movie was 1888. So, frankly, movies are older than radios. Bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. Does that disturb you guys? Now, is that... Am I rocking with your sense of time again? (laughs) When when was the first TV show? First TV show? 60s. 1889. That's not true. (laughs) <laughs> hey man, don't fuck with us, dude. Because people who are editing Wikipedia are coming to this podcast and if we, if we <laughs> right, put out misinformation. Right. It could have ripple effects beyond like 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 we know. Should this be the shortest um, episode yet? We stop it at seven minutes and don't ever address it. Oh, that yo, would be Nate, awesome. what gave you joy this week, man? <laughs> what was the first need- television show? Um, we need to do some epic, epic fucking time. It's a long essay. There's no simple answer for one the first television show was. So, Oh, shit. I got it? an April 40s? Fool's idea. Yeah, we need 40s. to go so fucking hard on April Fool's. Like April Fool's. We need to what kill somebody quit? who yeah. deserves it on April Fool's. <laughs> Adele Dazim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but... Yeah, so TVs and movies color our lives. We need them to distract us from the... The fear of death, the not knowing why we're here. You know, they're just time fillers, but they teach us about ourselves, don't they? They teach mm-hmm. us about events as well, if it's a documentary. But what's this is the age old question which is better, right? TV or movies? And I don't want to hear no BS about its personal choice because there's an answer. One of right. them is better. And so, what do we have? Where do you guys stand? Better. Jack, TV versus movies, you have to pick one. You I have to pick I, one. I, 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 Which one are you picking? Which one are you fucking going to throw down for? Because we, we need to have a battle right now. All right. If you really want me to say it, it's movies. <laughs> it's movies. It's my yeah. first okay. And Eric, where night. do you stand on this? TV I stand movies. on... Something tells me that you're going to fucking say TV. television. I think it might be TV. But just by a fucking hair, half a hair's length. I'll just say that. Okay. Wait, where are you? And this coward? might be my favorite sort of. Uh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna. This is how I know this is gonna be a good episode because Uh-oh. I'm on Team Jack movies. Oh, oh shit! So we get the, the classic style. Oh, okay. You're fucking ass. This is this is classic <laughs> high go, school man. school debate style where they're the one kid is forced to argue the other <laughs> opinion, but really he just wants to be friends with the other guys and he's intimidated by their argumentative style. And so now it's gonna be a sad fight where the fucking other <laughs> the other opponent well, me is all fucking hungover and sick, and you guys are fucking all juiced up on the. Super soldier drugs beating Eric the fuck Ray. out of me. I'm gonna you're gonna you're gonna get your eyes open today, actually. <laughs> not no 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 not okay. to the, to, not to movies, man. To what? But to to a new style of debating, right? Oh, an American sexual culture, debating. Mm, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's a very good idea. And I don't know what it means, but I'm into mm, it. I can tell you. But mm. man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, tell me, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> One kiss for every fucking sentence. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I was wondering oh what would God. happen if we kept going that way. And, and then, all right, all right, let's move on. All right. So what, but what I'm meaning to say is <laughs> we're not trying to dominate you today. We're mm-hmm. trying to actually make you love us. That's okay. That's my style of debate. 
No, give me not. some. Get, so give me some movie. Why, why are movies? Because I now I'm gonna lean into my role here and, and yeah, say some things it. I don't mean, but it's for the sake of the argument. Movies make me fucking sick. The way that industry yeah. operates and the way you pay your stars is out of control. You guys' budgets are next level. You you're sucking yourselves off with your vanity projects and your artistic BS. TV is the real man's game. This is the blue collars medium. This is what men go home and, <laughs> and watch with a gallon of whiskey, a pint a of gal- beer, and a, <laughs> and a wife who don't love them no more. You know what I'm saying? You guys have the, the bs <laughs> it's all i'm gonna say i just I, I know you said that you're gonna fib a little for the thing but i think a lot of people who make movies are watching and i would just be a little you know tone it down a little Dude, bit, you know what I'm okay to those who are watching i have some script ideas i have some yeah, yeah, short yeah, yeah, of, of course, course short films but many long ass three hour four hour long movies i'd love to make yeah but and those will be ahead. short in a couple of years all right so let me say this about <laughs> movies man this is the thing a movie it draws you in for a I just got the feeling that this is the worst podcast ever made. <laughs> a m- <laughs> let's do, let's do it. Let's fuck it. Let's just go in. Let's have the let's make the absolute worst podcast that's ever ever been, made. been done. So, ever ever been done. I'm right, sorry I interrupted because I know up. you were on a good train of thought, Jack. Go, go ahead. Up. A movie is what? Well, you're about to look like a fool because I'm going to drop one of my <laughs> phrases. Yeah. Okay. A movie, it's it has responsibility. A TV a show, yes. all they're trying to do is addict you like heroin, like a McDonald's sugary patty, right? But right. a McDonald's a sugary patty. <laughs> yeah, but a movie, okay. they send you back into the world, fully taking the responsibility of your point of view and your attitude and your mood when they send you back it out there um they're not just trying to addict you they're trying to tell a story it's it's very human mm. and it can reach an intensity that you can't live in forever it's kind of like do you want to burn hot and live short or mm-hmm. do you want to live forever and just have it be less intense no man i want to see that shit i want to see life and death <laughs> Look at the tree of life. You could not. Oh, here's the thing. And sorry, but you could not. You could do in a TV show what you can do in a movie. You could not do in a movie what you can do in a TV show. Maybe you can. <laughs> <laughs> Some would say that that's okay. all that you know. Yeah. TV is no, I, is like right now. Yeah, yeah, totally. Can we switch the episode topic? We yeah. What do you want to talk about? Candy. Uh, candy. Yeah, that sounds fun. Why does that sound fun to me? <laughs> well, that let me say this. Into the, I've been eating more candy recently, but yeah, go ahead, Nate. What would you rather watch? Michael Scott in the office on TV. He's just going through these sort of minuscule problems and everyone in the office is kind of, you know, mad at him and then they love him and then... You know, there's there's not there's not a lot happening, all right, in the TV show The Office. Or, what if The Office was a movie? And what if Michael Scott fucking killed Jan or something like that? And he's oh, got to hide the body in the in the basement with oh. with um uh the the warehouse people, yeah. all right. And 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 uh Jim is he's he's that's his mom is Jan. So he's got to fucking take out Michael Scott in an epic sort of in the pa- in the in the in the uh, in the parking lot, and they have some epic battle. Michael Scott yeah, just says, weird. "I don't even want to live with myself anymore," and he shoots himself in the head, and that's the fucking credits. Greg Daniels directed, written by. Yeah, well, man. Which one do you want to see? I would rather see the the, the classic TV show, The Office, that I <laughs> that I fall in love with. I, personally, if I'm gonna answer that honestly. Well, flip it the other way. What if the movie Seven was a TV show, and you got oh I mean, Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt plays. I actually can't remember this movie very well at all, but somebody dies in a plate of spaghetti. Um, Eric, the are you checking Instagram? No, I'm looking up a. You remember that movie Come and See? Hell no. Have Come you ever seen see. this movie, Nate? Nate, you've never seen uh, seen Come and See. No. This is the most fucked up movie of all time. 
This is a war drama. This is a war drama. It's about a... I didn't want to get into it, but I'm just... uh was thinking of a Michael Scott and a come and see type movie. If anybody listening has seen this movie, imagining Michael Scott being that little kid running around getting all effed up by war. It seems Russian. It is, maybe it is Russian. Something like that. Come and see. Top movies of all time right now, Nate. You have two seconds to name your top <laughs> five favorite movies. Fucking Toy Story, Inside Out, fucking... Uh, <laughs> Soul wish so. fucking the little dino the green dinosaur one uh <laughs> inside out two frozen special features josh gad what was your favorite just watching movie josh experience? gad go off as olaf what was your favorite movie movie going experience you've ever had in your life i will say i swear to god mine was star wars episode one some would say the worst star wars movie I think Menace. Uh, unanimously, everyone hates that movie. But yeah. guess what? I was fucking seven years old or something when that came out. Oh. And those movies are meant for children. All right? And if you're a child and you're watching that shit, that's pretty much the most epic fucking thing you could ever see in your life. And I remember I was in the fucking front row of the movie, too, which I hate yep. being. Yep. And I loved the fucking shit. That was probably my favorite movie I've ever seen in my life. Well, they did, by the way, I'll, I'll give it up to the Lucasfilm team. They did the marketing right on that shit. Because are you kidding me? The Darth Maul toys, the fucking sodas, the fucking Darth Maul all over the Doritos. Darth Maul was the best marketing fucking thing they've ever had. You know what I'm saying? The pod racing games. I was in love yeah, with that they, universe. Yeah, they put their whole fucking... Natalie Portman, when I was whatever, six years old watching that... Crush, Who is she in Crush that? Alert. Princess Leia? That's Padme, dude. So don't play. He's not so no, mad don't, when you said that. <laughs> don't come to play. Is that Leia? No, it's not Leia. That's Leia's, Leia's mom. Padme. Lakshmi? No, Different it's not Skywalker. Padma Lak- Lakshmi. It's Padme. All right. All right. You could see my similarity. I think I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Are you in oh, a that's bad a good mood title. today? You know, this might be the first time I'm in a bad mood on this podcast. <laughs> well, it's not fucking helping, man. I don't know what. Should we? Do you want us to sing you a song or like? I don't because people people no. want people listening want you to be happy. We want you to be happy in a good mood, rather. I don't give a fuck. All right, man. Well, if that's how you're gonna act, losing it, losing, we can do about losing it. track. <laughs> okay, so Nate, you gave some joking answers, but really, dude, what movies are on your top? You know what? I know this is a fucking cop out just saying this, but I really do hate giving like top 10 like lists. Okay, I so I, so there's a friend that's sick in bed. They're fucking bedridden and it could be something <laughs> really bad. They don't know, but they're waiting for the test and they want to distract themselves with some fun movies. See, this is I like this. This is a good scenario. What are some movies you give to them for them to watch while they're all sick and fucking scared? You know what? I I feel like okay, no I I would say, you know what comes to mind? American movie. That's one of bro. That's always uh, is, my wreck. Oh my Whenever God. I watch that, it just is always, always incredible. It's like it's side splitting. It's one when, of the funniest. When was the first time you ever. watched it? It was in Chicago, and I think it was with us. I was just like crying, laughing. Was it? Maybe because remember that. after James died, and we were all at at our house, and we were all just kind of grieving for a long time, and we turned it. That was the first time I ever saw that movie too, and that's the hardest I've laughed. Yeah, uh, in my life. Remember when he's putting the head through the door? Yeah, that's what I was just about. When he's putting the through the cabinet. That is like the funniest moment oh that's ever been captured. God. This is oh, poor shit. local actor. If you have not seen this movie, I Go really hope and I pray to God that there are hundreds of people out there who have not seen American movie. It's a it's like a documentary about a local wisconsin filmmaker who's like trying to make his like a film (laughs) and yeah it's just everything that i love about think that is funny about a person is like wrapped into what's his name mark something mark um 
Mark Bloody Borchert. And yes. you know, I met his daughter. I met Mark's daughter at a film festival. She's like a organizer of film festivals now. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. And rest and in peace still... to, um, what's his name? Oh, yes. Uh, Poor Mike Shank his best passed friend. away early, like last yes. year, I think. Man, yep. R.I. fucking P, dude. God, Mike Shank. We all need a Mike Shank in, in this life. Yes. Absolutely. Have you seen it, Jack? We watch it. Oh! Getting some feedback. <laughs> check, what? check. What oh. happened? <laughs> just happened. <coughs> Uh, <laughs> I just got a crazy <laughs> echo. That was nuts. I heard um, that. That's Mike Shank's ghost. Wow. Uh, we watched it in bed one time, but I came from, I can't remember much except for like a dumpster or something. Okay, now I'm going to flip that to you, Eric, with TV. Um, what is, what, uh, a sickly dying person is, and they just want to experience yeah some sort of relief and pain and they're in the worst stage of whatever illness they have and it is just wrecking themselves but they but at nighttime it kind of wears off where they can they can pay attention to something and they just need this 25 to an hour long Mm -hmm. period to just zone out and just enjoy and forget what are the biggest belly laughs i ever get from a show and okay and i think it's peep show I think it's Peep Show, the British. Oh, Peep Show, sitcom Peep Show. It's the f- four, you know. It's just so fun. I've you only guys watched seen? a little bit of that. Are you like, kidding a me, Nate? Long, long Are you time ago. kidding that, me? That makes me want to dip back in. Go, like go when back I was in now. College. It's the be- It's just the fucking funniest thing on the planet. You know or, they tried to make know. an American version of it, and then and the what pilot's happened? on YouTube, and it's so busted. Damn. Why is What's it that American? Is it just the accents of the British or is it their sensibility? I'm trying to figure out why a British person being funny to me is a million times more funny than an American person. Why is that? Well, you know what it is? I have a theory. (laughs) What? And I'm going to get political. Say it now. I think somebody described this on... I don't know. I'm, I'm like repeating an opinion of somebody else's, but the UK has a much better like unemployment system. Like if you're yeah. unemployed, you can get like, I don't know, like it, it, it's all. The, I think the money's like there if you if you don't have a job, basically. Like you can get a stipend. So there's like a lot of artists when they're. It's something to do with like if you're unemployed, you have more time to like focus on whatever you're working on. You yeah. Know? So that was like a theory somebody po- posted up. Well, I think also the BBC is like government you know a lot of these comedy damn ass shows are government funded dude bbc government funded right so, so you don't have right. to be some rich freaking megalomaniac to get a freaking tv show that's right that's and may right I also add in terms of these adaptations i think people are so odd to think that it's not about the individual like you can just take the concept of a show and just put the premise in the hands of some other people like they're not going to inherently they're not going to be able to execute it unless the people whose sensibility are behind it anyways they could study it Mm -hmm. and they can get pretty close or they could reinvent it and make something new if they luck out and get some like talented people who would have made an otherwise hilarious show even if it wasn't that premise you know what i'm saying but it's a bit odd i don't know it's a bit pathetic to me to be honest to watch people like just taking something successful and not you know not having the ability to be a tastemaker and let some people make some new shit right but i will say this and i hate that i'm even uttering this sentence on a, on our podcast but hey, dude, that's bye. the goat that's the goat <laughs> all right, are you kidding all me right. hey chill, let's talk chill. about candy got too heated. let's talk yeah. about candy right. Right. Wait, is there any we got to say well, a couple more candy. things about movies and tv come on now is there any what <laughs> Couple more things about movies and TV. Come well, Jack, on what is your what is your recommendation for a movie or TV or show, TV show. Whatever, for a sickly friend? Well, I've got a few. A sickly patron. A patron. I've got a few. I, I actually have a menu for you. That's like oma, omakase style. Oh. Okay? So yes, first, sir. the first thing I want I you to do. I wish I knew what that was. Omakase. 
It's oh, sushi. You would bread. rock you with omakase, Nate. You have the omakase build. It looks like you live off omakase. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a sushi that the chef picks for you or something. Raw like we'll do fish. It, we'll do it when you come into you. I learned so much from you guys. It's amazing. You've never, yeah. You just we do have to go to Tokyo sauce. now. No delay. I'd go. <laughs> okay. Um, now say say what you're gonna say. Jack. All right. So the first thing you're gonna do mm-hmm. is I'm gonna mm-hmm. cleanse the palate. Okay, and we're gonna watch Groundhog Day, because that is going to let you indulge in being a shitty feeling. You're sh- feeling shitty, and then you come out the other side, ah, overwhelmed by gratefulness. Now that you're cleansed and you're ready to receive, we're moving on to. Well, can I say something one. about Groundhog Day? All right, Groundhog Day. What's your fucking name? Uh, with her spoon. No, her daughter is Margaret Qualley. The actress right. is, God, sorry, I'm just interrupting so hard, but I need to say this. The actress is Andy McDowell. Crush, crush city on her. Good God. Remember her? Oh, she's cute. Let me look her up. Andy McDowell. Yeah, that's right. Andy McDowell. And she was in a lot of them oh. type of movies. Mm-hmm. Yep. She was kind of the dream, wasn't she? All right, this is the section of the podcast where we're going to go quiet for a second and just kind of <laughs> drool. Just look at Google Images. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. Wow. That's right. Oh, she looks familiar because I've seen her in Remember movies. Remember her? They don't, yeah, from People the don't movies. really look like that anymore. You know what I'm saying? I guess her daughter um, looks pretty much almost exactly like her, but... And her yeah, daughter like is I an know actress. A couple people that, her daughter yeah. is an actress who was in The Leftovers, another amazing show. Okay. So, um, sorry to interrupt, Jack. What? It's all good. Continue. Shout out to Andy McDowell. She's a piece. Uh, <laughs> so then once your palate is cleansed, yeah. we're moving on to the Jackass Marathon. Oh. We're going to go Jackass oh. 1 and 2. 1 and 2 yeah. and you're done. Yeah. And then you're done. I don't want you watching any more than that. Uh, those are going to fill you with uh, what humans are meant to be filled with, which is a sense of community and togetherness and playfulness with others um and laughing in the face of pain and danger right then what i'm going to do is i'm going to prepare you for the end because this is this disease is presumably not going to go well uh i don't want to say for that maybe fast and furious one through eight Wow. And we're Jesus. gonna watch we're gonna, <laughs> This is like we're a watching whole day. it cl- clockwork like... orange style like fully. <laughs> and you're gonna see Paul Walker. It's been a long day. <laughs> and you are gonna be and I feel like I've sang that on this podcast before, but then um <coughs> you're gonna be ready to join him. So that is my basically end of life movie recommendation. Paul Walker Catalog. was one of them double take uh phone notifications for me. Twenty 20- when was it 2014 that he passed? Oh, what's been. up? I'm partying my ass off in college. Boom, boom, sh- 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 check the phone. Probably Turn the music off. Soundtrack. Everybody, Paul Walker has been burned to death in a Porsche. <sighs> he might have been smushed and then burned. Let's pray. That was yeah. a, a... That was a violent death. And they did that show the... Porsche? I think they showed the bodies. No. They looked like the... Well, I'm not going to say that. Okay. Do you think there could be a really because we're uh you know we're coming up with some movie ideas yeah all right we'll just let you guys know that um we're we're we're, mm. we're uh, working on multiple different projects and scripts and shit and well I was wondering this do you think scary movie style there could be a Fast and the Furious like just straight up parody movie <laughs> like that's called like. <laughs> Oh, slow, I would watch the, that. The slow and the whatever. The slow and the curious and the bi curious. Oh, <laughs> you know, I feel like I'll that just say would, this. Why do I think that would make millions upon millions, tens, a hundred million dollars in the box office? Americans' appetite for parody has gone down the drain when reality started being more uh, paradoxical <laughs> than even the movies. You know what I'm saying? Is that what parody <laughs> comes from? Paradoxical. I'm yeah. sure there's there's probably know. some sort of some connect, know. but you know what I'm saying? Comparison, etymological. What was that movie called? Like movie forty two or something? For oh, room forty. Room 40. 
Nate, have you been to Room 40? No. What's that? Is that the shining thing? Room for these nuts in your grill? Oh. oh you know I don't like that, that type <laughs> of humor and behavior from you. All right. I apologize. <laughs> Whew, shouldn't have done that. Um, what is room 42? Room 42 of these nuts in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that what well, that I'm is? A, am I the dumbest person on the planet? <laughs> Wait, Eric, is that really what that is? is no, that, I don't it, think so. Wait, Nate, no, when you're in New York, did you try any? Huh? When you when you're in New York, did you try these? Stop! I already know. Did this. you try these nuts? Oh, <laughs> oh D. Oh, I D. Wait, did I just town. get caught? Hold up, pause. Did I just get caught in the room forty two thing two times? Yeah. <laughs> Like I was like, is this really a thing? And then, and then again, it did. And then you're forgetting. I, need a I just got your up, ass too. Man. I just got your ass. No, you as didn't. Well. You did not get me. You did not. <laughs> you definitely did not get me, Eric. And you never will. Oh, I'm gonna uh, get you some. I need man. a. We need to get a doctor to my apartment right the fuck now to do some EKG, mental fucking full brain scan on my brain. Oh, you should go to City MD. Yeah, you know, you should go to City D. Do you know what that one is? I've, I've, I've learned and I'm never hey, gonna do that. Uh, I need a one dance. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Hennessy and Vivance. Uh, one more is that, time is that, Are you kidding me? Is that the line? A shot of Hennessy and Vivance? Um, because that would feel like know. heaven. That dose. I just made that up. That dose together. Yeah, it probably is. Okay, so uh, we've said our favorite movies, and it's funny because all of our movies and TV shows are pretty lighthearted. Now we all need to go through and mention a drama that changed our lives. Mm. Not theater, oh. but movies. Okay. You know what? You know what comes to mind? This is a what? movie. I feel like movies are just the most magical when you're. I feel like stories are the most. I don't know. Potent when you're a kid. That's when I. Those are my favorite memories of like. I would. Like the the most impactful, you know. That's yeah. when they're and hitting. Your, your mind's kind of blown away. Like you can like watch like a Disney movie and be like, "Oh my fucking!" Like I can't watch. There, there's very few movies I can watch today and be like have that same sense of like awe yeah. and like, "Oh my fucking god!" Like, yeah. There's something I mean, to being that dumb of a child and and seeing <laughs> a, a movie, you know. Like I want to be. I want to go back to that. I'm trying to get dumber, you know, which is obviously happening right now. Well, you could do that with acid, I bet. Hmm. Acid but you know what opposite. came to mind? You know what movie I walked what? out of and I was like, this is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. What? Like I don't think I don't Chicken, think there's any little... movie that's compared to this. What? What one? Minority Report. Wow. Starring Tom Cruise. Wow. Were you just like, did you want to be Tom Cruise? Of course I did. I, I that that Oh he was And then so... I come to find out years later that it's based on one of my favorite authors as an adult, Philip K. Dick. Mr. Dick. Book. Mr. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is a all right. To everybody listening, <laughs> we're not on our A game today. We're this is kind of how we really are. You're getting a peek behind the curtain. You're look at, looking at Oz himself. And I'll just say it: we were. We, it really is an emergency episode. I know you can't tell <coughs> the beginning if it was yeah, or not, but this if, really is. That's the reason that the rhythm, the rhythm, rhythm. God. <laughs> I think my circadian rhythm is off because yesterday we hit the the sauna so hard, didn't we, Jack? Oh, take me back. Nate, we were we were hitting a cold plunge oh. like you can't imagine, bro. Oh my goodness, mm. Nate, you're a plunger. I we gotta take Nate that. to. We're taking Nate in December there. Yeah, we're not gonna say what because we don't want to blow it up, and it's probably Spy eighty eight Wall Street bass come through on December tenth. We're gonna okay. be going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> By the time this this comes out, like July, that's so funny. Okay, so Minority Report was yours. You know what movie I fell in love with Say that it, I've man. seen way too many times to count for some reason? Say it. It's not even. It's it, the talented Mr. Ripley. Have you guys seen this? No, unless I have. Have you seen it, Nate? Wait, let me Google this. No, I haven't. But I you, I, you haven't seen it. 
I think the is this a movie that Edie Modica likes? Oh, does she? I'm sure she she has amazing I feel taste. Like she so. was like you. Oh no 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 no! I'm I'm mixing up. This is. It's Matt Damon pretending to be somebody else and living amongst the Mr. The rich. Ripley. <laughs> no, you know who recommended this to me? I think is Rachel. Who? Collie. Yeah. Ben Does that make fun. sense? Amazing taste as well. Yeah, it makes total sense. Mm. It's just hitting. And it's, yeah, Jude Law. Jude Law, sexy as all fuck. Mm, that's how a man should look. I'm never going to look that way. I'm a, I'm a ectomorph. Or what do you call it? Endomorph. Ec- I'm on the different side of the morph scale. But Jude Law, snap. Julius he can Law. get it in that movie. <laughs> I'll just say it like that. So, what am I going to pick for my drama? My hard-hitting drama. Well, I'm going to put you on to something rare. Mm. You know Dennis Quaid? Of co- the rookie. Did you, well, did you know that he's capable of drama as well? Parent Trap. What is Orders. it? This is a rare, interesting concept. Okay. The movie is called Enemy Mine. Heard of it. The alien. This is a movie where Dennis Quaid and an alien are in intergalactic space war. They both crash land on a foreign planet. And they have to learn to survive. And I'll just, I'm going to, I fucking want to give a spoiler so bad because I don't think anyone's going to watch it. But, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Say it. They. Hook up. Have, well, the alien is get has a baby and they raise the alien baby together and is the alien a girl well i don't know if they do it like that with the sexes (laughs) but apparently basically this is a full drama where two people do not speak the same language at all wow and it's a whole fucking movie where dennis quaid is like you mother like full level 10 emotional acting in the most absurd circumstance where it's like <laughs> i can't believe it oh my god it's so beautiful your child is gorgeous and then the alien goes it's like, <laughs> the, the, the fact that it's not a comedy is so unreal it is like the oh most like when you forget what you're watching and you're just lost in the emotion of the scene and then you hear the alien again you're like what the fucking hell where am i do you know there's an episode of star trek the next generation that is a bit similar and the episode is titled Darmok at when Tanagra. When did it come out? 1990. Uh, after. Enemy Mine is 85. Oh, shit. So it is after. Yeah. Oh, snap. But basically, similar thing. Mr. Captain Picard is crash landed, and so is an alien on this planet. They don't speak the same language, but they, they have to survive. They stole the motherfucking movie. Wow. And basically, this alien can only say Darmok at Tanagra. The translator's broken, but that's all they can say. And so they're learning to communicate. As it turns out, this alien civilization doesn't speak in sentences. They speak in events. So that he's mentioning oh. an old historical event where something happened in an old ancient battle, and that's what they need to do. So, yeah, to everybody Could listening, you imagine being in that fucking the Star Trek TV show writer's room? How much fun would that would be? Oh, I you bet that was with- actually high charge, sexually charged. You know what I'm saying? All them mm, sexy, nerdy beasts oh, getting sex. there, chemicals yeah. all percolating. <laughs> Can you imagine being one of these alien, the actors playing the alien in the suit in the 80s and 90s when it was just Sweating heavy prosthetics? Hot. Sweating, full panic attacks. Yeah, you die. They gotta replace you. I think you should leave style. Type of paint. Uh, Can I ask you guys about the movie Lost in Translation? Of course you can ask about it. What do you want to know? So I just recently watched this, and you're telling me that they filmed it in Japan, and the lead actors were Scarlett Johansson and what's his name? Bill Murray. So Bill Murray is... When at the time of filming, approximately fifty one, and she is approximately seventeen, yeah. and they share basically what's called a kiss at the end of the movie, and it's a bit odd. Yeah. Well, I just have one question. 
what was that? I don't know. <laughs> Sophia don't Coppola. Know. Uh, it sounds like you got hit on the head with a Coppola based on the ages of these people. What's a Coppola? Is that <laughs> ham? A coconut. Pork? I meant like a coconut. Oh. Um, <coughs> all right. No, that, that movie couldn't be done today. And the cough that you just did, Nate, is the one, one of the most crazy. Was it, a, was it a sickly one? It was a... Yeah, it was the, it did look sickly, and it just was I, right. I can't. I, I I've been the this. I was sick probably a week ago, and the coughs have not gotten gotten less sickly. <sighs> Crap. Am I? Do we need we need to get a doctor to my to my apartment. I think. I think there's yeah. something going on. Something deeper. You, you need like an 1800s traveling doctor with the big black suitcase. Oh man, the big black doctor's bag. That's amazing. That that eliminates the ambulance, you know. A on foot doctor. Yeah. Mm hmm. Give me surgery in my bed, you know. Full surgery. Ooh, I'd listen to that song. Give me surgery in my bed. Start to dissect my. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Put the knife on my tummy. Make the sexual nice surgeon. Shit. <laughs> Nay, you are the sexual surgeon from what I've heard. You're so precise uh, with it. Fucking, mm, you're, you're <laughs> to be, yeah, your sexual you style miss. being called surgical. Scary. Uh, yeah, you get, yeah. Nate makes the smallest movements on, on human history when he's having sex. You would never, <laughs> you have a calculator like on your side, graphing calculator to figure out exactly what to hit next, how deep to go. How to, <laughs> what? I one of those, like, what is that called? The protractor? Where you, uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the super super crazy bright light overhead. You got the, the mask bright, on. The lightest, most light that has ever been in a room. A dentist style. Yeah. The blood pressure cuff. <laughs> All Put right. a blood pressure cuff on the dick. The blood is that what you're talking oh. about? You're... <laughs> oh, squeeze it out. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just like running through the Would roller it get your actual blood pressure if you did that? If you put up one of them blood pressure things on the weenie? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, man. For, depends on the size, but yeah. Only I guess one for way me, to it find out. Yeah. There's only down, one down, way to down, find down. out. Dude, ja medical jackass. Medical down, jackass. Down, 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 down. Did y'all watch, uh, watch Steve-O's new special? No. Well, I don't want to talk about it because he's not coming on to plug it. So Did I you watch Matt fun. Rife's new special? <laughs> Did I watch it three times? Vulture annihilated it. No, I didn't watch so it. So you know he's did. fucking crying at home. Like he, like what? What he? The, people like that shouldn't even. Why are we even bother reviewing them? You know. I don't know. What do you mean? Like I'm. You're just talking saying, about why like, review millionaires? Why review Matt Reif? Like, who cares? We all know who he is. We everyone knows uh, what's going on. You know why? On. You we know don't need why. a review to tell us that this, this is why, sucks, man. That this is whatever. We get it. We it's just so obvious that I, no one needs another person to dissect what they got. No, what look, they're putting down. Back in the 1910s, Nate, there yes. was people would be want they come into fucking town and they go oh shit the carnival's here let me go to the pick up the newspaper and see which bearded lady's the fucking best one to go shake hands with right that's what the function was these days it's all flipped turned upside down all of a sudden we have these reporters who are trying to basically write something just to get a little bit of the traction that this individual has already gotten for themselves mm -hmm. so it's we are living in basically backwards mm. world as far as I'm mm. concerned when it comes to journalism. And I don't know what to, what to do what to mm -hmm. do about it. <laughs> would you like to see Matt Reif in a Korean drama? You like find out <laughs> would that make you respect him more if you find out he was a Korean drama superstar speaking uh, full Korean? I absolutely would. Oh wow. I saw I am that blown was... away mm -hmm, by people who uh, can speak multiple languages. <laughs> polyglots we should have oh. the we should have a polyglot on polyglux here and put the a man that's what you are jack uh well the the polyg polyglux po polyglux <laughs> nah, 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 i'm not like that uh <laughs> shouldn't we get a polyglot up on here and test them oh clear we you, should we get Xiaoman? if we could get Xiaoma nyc on Xiaoma. the this is a youtuber who goes into basically chinatown and blows their fucking mind because he's a white boy <laughs> mm-hmm 
And he's doing it with new languages too. So he does. You've seen him, right, Nate? He does Chinese, which and he does he have. does like multiple variations of Chinese, and he's blowing people's minds. He does yeah. Spanish, which is not as impressive. But then he's also been doing patois. Yeah, it's, is it patois? That is that the good? <laughs> I'm so I, ignorant. I think, but. I, I think that is what the YouTube video is titled. He's like doing the Jamaican style. And it's just like, mm, I don't know if this is the, you know what I mean? Yeah, it feels a little different. But that's, that, and that's how you go down the rabbit hole. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Because you start out, you can kind of see there's little entryways into becoming radical right-wing American. And I feel like that is one. You feel like Shama so, is an zing- entryway into the right wing? It's like a... I do feel Gateway like that. You think he's right wing? I feel like anything you watch on YouTube, I don't care. It could be this fucking podcast. Yeah. There will be one thing that is... This is the Buddha, This is a Buddha Judge Pipeline podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you listen to one episode and you get fucking flooded with the Buddha Judge propaganda. This is the pro-military Democrats type shit. <laughs> Those I are the sickest serious. ones. I want to see Pete Buttigieg lose his fucking mind, have a mental breakdown oh. on camera. He would be the perfect the Spider-Man level. villain who's taking a type of drug to stay awake for political debates, but actually it turns him into a fucking lizard. <laughs> you know there what I'm saying? Is, well, like he is Dr. Connors. And yeah, for everybody listening, I, I think I said it in a previous episode, but I just beat fucking Spider-Man 2 on normal mode. <laughs> Congratulations. On the amazing Spider-Man on mode. On normal mode? There's a, Are you there's a do level expert? that's easier than that? Is there there's a level. Mode? There's Yes, there is, dude. And I didn't go for that. I'm surprised. But I did play Baldur's Gate on easy as fuck mode, and I, it was still hard <laughs> for me. Have you guys seen Death to Smoochie? Yes. No, I didn't <coughs> see that. John Stewart's in it, and Robin Williams. Yeah, may I say it is so fucking jarring, having never seen John John Stewart in a narrative to be watching a movie, and then all of a sudden John Stewart's in the scene, and it feels like this is somebody who is such a personality that they cannot. Does register. it feel like he's gonna go Jordan Clipper on the Stewart? It's just if it, it, no matter, even though he's obviously not looking into the lens, it yeah. feels like he is looking into the like the fourth wall is just nuclear bomb annihilated. That's why we have to be. I'm telling you guys, capital careful. C, careful with this podcast. We want it to actually stay at this level to where it's only it's a niche podcast. Because if it blows up enough, we're not getting put in these Korean dramas. We're not getting put in fucking Galaxy well, Quest 2. Well, this is the problem with our society right now, Eric, is that <laughs> if it blows up that much, it's almost the only way for us to do that. <laughs> I know. Eh, 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 eh. And this is why the art is so fucking unenjoyable these days is mm-hmm. it, you have to sell your soul in order to put your soul on the map. You know what I'm saying? In order to, you, have to be, you have to sell your soul in order to, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Not right. Are you guys walking through life feeling like the main character? Are you walking through life like Neo and everybody else is still plugged into the Matrix? Do you feel this sometimes? Pre-pandemic. Yeah. Pre-pandemic, you felt like the main character and then that was robbed from you by the disease? Uh, that made it abundantly clear to me that I am a statistic. <laughs> <laughs> you're an are outlier, you though, dude. You, you are a statistic, like- but you're an outlier. <laughs> do you feel like the main character of your life? Do you feel in no, control? No, I don't. More because more everything I've... that everything you say, everything you do, every behavior that I've seen <laughs> tells me that you're violently not in control of your life. <laughs> and you have no control <laughs> over what you say, what you do, what you think, yeah. what you feel. That you are trapped, that you are being... <laughs> I'm, led right I'm led by God. I'm led by God. You're right about that, but it's God doing everything. <laughs> That's God shining through me. Shining his light on my eight minute stand up sets. Nobody could believe how good it Yo, Eric just crushed for seven minutes straight, dude. No way. Yeah, that's what people are Sometimes saying. I feel like if wow. we actually were like hella Christian or just religious in any way, I think that's what we're missing between us being at the level we're at and being Stephen Colbert. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you guys want to do it right percent. now, dear God. Please come. Should we save ourselves? It's 20 seconds right now. Let's save ourselves. I'll do it for us. Dear God, we, (laughs) Jack Jack in the sunlight, basking in God's sun. 
<laughs> go, Dear, go, go. Jack, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you accept that he died on the cross for your sins? And do you repent for all your sins and choose to walk in the way of the light from here on out? Can I still be Jewish? No. No, dude. <laughs> no. All right. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Yes, yes. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Just forgive me. Another forgive one. me. Forgive me. Forgive and me. wait. Okay. And Nate? Uh, wait. You were Christian once. You were walking in the way of the light, but you turned. Why did you turn to the darkness? And will Look, you? I just want to be saved, man. I don't want to talk about. <laughs> okay, do you, are you Christian now? More Christian than ever before. Oh, I am going shit. to fucking bring wow. back some sort of uh, violent Rome Vatican style Christian behavior, and <laughs> we're gonna. Do it. Whoa! And now. Eric, do it for the listeners. I can we save every p- Wait, person what? that's listening. Oh, do it for right the listeners. Oh, 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 okay. And I'll, I'm gonna save myself real quick. Jesus, oh, okay, welcome back, bro. Missed your ass. I was just kind of chilling for a while. I like it was enjoying partying, but let's fucking rock from now on here on out. You're my business partner. You better help me out, or I'm ditching you again. Okay, now for the rest of the listeners, <laughs> listeners, do you accept Jesus as your personal savior? Do you accept him and do you take, will you let him wash your sins away and do you repent for all you've done in the name of God? Amen. Let, let us know. Comment. Yes or no. Comment. Comment. If we saved you, we get to report that to our superiors. Yeah. It's not a pyramid. It's not pyramid type scheme, spiritual right. pyramid scheme, but, but we do get a crazy ass bonus. Also, if, we should uh, start, yeah. you know, you remember, you remember in Catholicism where they would go into, you know, that booth repent their mm. sins and the priest Con- would be the on the other side mm. confessional right, booth, booth. Mm. can we start yeah. the digital confessional booth where people can email oh, us all their sins damn. every day and then we can just reply back atoned or whatever to we've, each one we've been it looking for something to put in the ten dollar tier <laughs> <laughs> you know what yeah, i'm saying we we've been looking yeah. for something to put in the ten dollar tier if you we're starting this now if you sign up for the ten dollar <laughs> tier once a month, we are holding confessional hour. You get to come in, confess, confess your worst sins. <laughs> but we have the same things, kind of rules as a therapist. If you confess to killing yeah. someone, we do have to report you, and, and we, it's we will look, take you down to bounty uh, hunter style. Uh, and by the way, it might look like we are just not actually on the Zoom, and we have recorded videos of ourselves saying we forgive you over and over yes. again and nodding our heads. <laughs> That's just how yes. the religion works. <laughs> We are there. It's fully, we hear you. And, and, dude, could we do this? You know those things called taxes that we're about to pay on this fucking shit? I'm not about well, to Well, guess what? That. If Joy Taxes was a church, and I feel like all of our listeners would be so down to categorize us as a, as religion, a church, we could be tax free. Oh, oh. We may as so, well. So, 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 how do we, what's really going to stop us from being a religion in the court of law? Nothing, because everybody dude. that's everybody that we're uh, that our listeners would be so down to be like, Let yeah, it's a, you know, the Church of what? I'm down. The, the Church of Joy. I, I could come up with my imagination. I could come up with an even more powerful type Scientology type of religion. Give me fucking so ten minutes, and I'll come up with the fucking craziest shit you've ever heard. That's getting all, every celebrity <laughs> transfers from Scientology to mine, and mine's so all much right. more toxic, so much more evil. <sighs> So what we're saying is, Jesus, we were rocking with you for about three and a half minutes there, but <laughs> unfortunately, we we got to start our own shit, man. You had your chance. You've been letting the whole world down for 2,000 years. We still are fucking podcasting. Has it What's really that? been 2,000 since Jesus was here? Didn't that seem like a uh, long time and even not even that much time at the same time? Time truly, is weird like that. Time goes by faster and faster. This year felt like, what, a fucking week and a half? Try and think nah, back to this, this time year last felt year. Long, long. We had just one year ago, Eric. We were. Nah, I can't remember. <laughs> but we did go to LA last year. That was fun. Okay, so this is what a religion is by legal terms. Uh, the term religion has reference to one's views of his interesting his relations to his creator and to the obligations they impose of reverence for his being and character and of obedience to his will what 
We're going to have Yo. to do some legal research. We'll circle back with you guys on the status of this. Check with our legal team. Just yeah. know yeah. we are working on this. Nate has a Nate has a free lawyer right now because you can't see, but he's in a wheelchair. But we're you know mm-hmm. we could from up to some from, consulting. Yeah, can't even think of a joke. It's um, all right. Well, we guys, say, we just bodied another episode essentially, um, yeah. and we need to say what gave us joy, which is it's. I mean, this week was so crazy. Oh, you know what? I got a simple one, and I don't care if it's food again. But I just got, I was at the deli counter. I usually get turkey. <laughs> and I saw they had yes. a Chipotle chicken, and I was like, Ooh. let me get that. And actually, a chicken, sliced chicken on a sandwich, pretty good with it. So oh. that's what gave me. And I'm going to have a sandwich right after this and go crazy on it. And I'm going to watch, by the way, TV because I don't watch movies while I eat. Wow. Like that. Okay. Wow. Out of respect for the movies. Out of respect. Um, Incredible. I'm going to say my joy is, well, I, th- I feel like this is my favorite time in L.A. And it's just gotten like really kind of a little chilly. And mm. it's like the it's my favorite weather is like kind of, I guess, kind of like 58 or something where you can kind of like wear a jacket and fall, spring, like kind of on the chillier side. And today was a really, really, it's really, it's cold for LA, but, and, and I don't know, there's like some sort of like, uh, foil, uh, uh, plants or foliage that is blooming in the, in the winter time that it's just, foliage. the smells are different. Foliage. You know, what am I trying to say? Is that, is that the word I'm looking for? Foliage. Foliage. <laughs> foliage? What is it? Foliage? Fo- yeah, foliage. I don't know foliage. why that was so funny it, the way you said it. Foliage. <laughs> foliage. Okay. Foliage. Yes, we're, we're listening very respectfully. Continue. You're not, man. You guys are making fun of me. <laughs> no, we're not. Foliage. Go. Foliage. 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 But foliage. It's just the smells are just, it just smells different. You know? It's popping. And, it's just, and it kind of reminds yeah. me of when I first moved to LA. Was It was in January. Mm-hmm. And I feel like. When I first moved to LA, oh my God, here we go! It's all about to happen. Uh, yep. Another one. In, the, in this, uh, this is about to be the beginning. You know, the city of sin. So it kind of reminds me of that kind of hopeful, you know, a uh, uh, spirit and feeling of the future. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Hell yeah! Um, what gave me joy this week? I'll have to say is uh, a, a, a collection of experiences, but all of them being summed up to perhaps the city of New York City. Similar to Nate, it's become wow. winter here once again, and I just am so filled with joy, to be frank, about when the weather's nice like this and cold, I feel like that's my natural, what my body wants, and Same. the smells are crispier and nice and mm. going out and getting into the city a good couple times this week going to ruby mcallister's fragrance party was a huge was joy fun as hell. fragrance release party tragedy uh wonderful smell if you have a nose go buy it and then going out going for a nice walk with my friend Ah, oh, that was so beautiful oh, and then of course yesterday going to the spa with some more friends or whatever it's Sauna. called the banya Sauna. the, the banya. russian banya uh and coming out back into the city the beautiful take the foliage. Train, take the train home 40 degrees. I'm wearing flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking joy. That was the shiz. That literally yesterday was quite fucking enjoyable. And getting a slice. Oh. New York City. If you're thinking about moving here, do it. Save up. That's and a then do message it. for you, Nate. LA's about Nate. to be in the fucking Pacific Ocean due to my prediction, my fucking calculations about the quake. What are we gonna, what, what, I'll, I'll move to New York when the Patreon gets 20. Can we get it to 25K right now? So we need some one big donor. <laughs> Is that bump it up. possible? 15 grand a month. Put it down right now. We got. There's one billion out there, a billionaire out there that's fucking listening. I know you. Your nose drip is falling down. off. I can see it, dude. It won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally coming. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right. We got to end it. We got to end the pod. Begging a billionaire. All right. For it. So, what? so the answer is, is it TV or is it movies? 
Well, and actually, the choice is up to you. And we respect all day. creators. Have a good day. Well, that concludes another incredible fucking episode of Joy Tactics. Head over to patreon.com slash joy tactics to unlock exclusive weekly bonus episodes. And make sure to follow us on social media where we post fire TikToks and hilarious shit like that. And if you loved the shit you just listened to make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening and remember, we are shaped by our thoughts, we become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves.